Hello and welcome friends. Welcome to another episode where I review vintage uh, fountain pens. Today I have for you one of my favorite German fountain pens manufacturers of all time and probably you've guessed it. Yes, we have a model from Caveco. This is the model. I will uh, give it a zoom because I want to show you. So we have a colleague Caveco Fabricat. The model is 711 and uh, it is or it was originally equipped with an EF nib. What is special about this uh, plain looking uh, fountain pen? You can see that in comparison with uh, a model from 1937 which has this beautiful beautiful celluloid which is shiny this is a quite plain model and if you look at the gold trims you can see that th this model has uh, simple metal trims and even the rings from the cap are missing and they are replaced by this uh, pattern two lines pattern and I have a suggestion about this fountain pen and you can see it's missing also the Caveco logo, the metal Caveco logo at the end of the cap. As I told you, I have a theory about this piece. So I strongly believe that this is a piece made in um, the Second World War between, I think, 1940 and 1943. Why do I say that? So first, we have no rings at uh, uh, the cap, uh, no logo, and this particular model comes with a steel nib, and we can see on it number twenty two nine three, and onyx. Of course, I don't think this is the original nib of this product. And I said to you that it was uh, made between 1941 and 1943. And why 1943? 1943 because uh, the Reich, there was a law issued in 1943, which forbid the production of writing instruments. There is barely any information on the final years of the war regarding the fountain pen industry. We know that the company Caveco was still able to handle repairs and maintenance for their products, but the business was at a standstill. So the colleague was a low entry model of the Caveco, but um, with these elements, I really think that this is a wartime model. And regarding the nib, we know that uh, the steel nibs replaced the precious metal nibs and we know for sure that uh, Caveco used the bare contra nibs and the uh, uh, pallet nibs so they were um, steel nibs or combination of materials uh, which were not pressure materials of course after the end of the war they managed to use the gold precious metal because during the war, this um, uh, metal was uh, used for, exclusively for the war industry. So not many information about this Caveco and about the model 711. I uh, searched on the internet, but unfortunately I um, didn't find much information about it. It is interesting that we have a button filler, a push button filler with a rubber sack. These pens were filled by operating a push lever button, which is here at the end of the barrel. Uh, this uh, push lever button was uh, covered by this blind cap and practically a flat spring on the inside of the pen, on the barrel, push on the rubber sack. The generated vacuum created caused the ink to flow from the ink bottle 
to the ink feeder and into the ink sack, the interior ink sack. So this was the improved version of the lever filling system and Caveco used it from 1928 until the 1940s. So another clue, in the 1930s, this was considered an um, updated um, filling mechanism. So the trend was the piston filling mechanism, which was introduced for the first time in the, 19, uh, the early 1930s by Pelican. I will leave the dimensions of this interesting, interesting fountain pen on the screen. Please let me know in the comments if you, if you think that this is a wartime model. Maybe I am mistaken, but uh, after the research I've done on the internet, I highly think that this is a wartime model, quite stripped of all metal trims and um, uh, other uh, identification, which made uh, Caveco such a great luxury piece, writing instrument. This is a plain uh, looking uh, instrument, but um, it is part of the Caveco history and I'm quite proud to have it in my collection. Okay, now we will be ready for the writing sample. Of course, this uh, button filler unfortunately is broken in the sense that I can't push this rod, so it means that the inner sack is broken in the sense that in contact with ink this inner sack must uh, be changed uh, every f 10 or 20 years and I don't have the skills to open it and change it but someday I will uh, restore it professionally maybe I can find a um, steel nib, a uh, bare contra nib or a pallet nib I don't know maybe I will find information about this nib so number 293 onyx and uh, now i will uh, do the writing sample so for the writing sample i will uh, uh, sorry i will change the angle of the camera because i want to you to see better the uh, paper so right here yes we will close in the paper and um, mm, you know that unfortunately because the filling mechanism is uh, broken the sack is broken i will um, just dip it in uh, ink and i have here uh, parker quick ink but uh, you must know that this parker quick contains half of it parker quick and the other half is uh, pelican uh, 4001 let me open it okay so like i said i will just dip it in ink okay that is enough maybe i need a little uh, tissue to clean it i will clean only the grip section and i will leave the ink on the nib and on the feed the feed you can see it's an ebonite feed an original feed and now we are ready for the writing sample i will just show you that this can be posted without problems but i prefer to use it unposted so let me give you a zoom to have a better perspective yes so this is a caveco and yes it doesn't write okay um i will dip it again let me see now not so much okay yes it's yes it has a sweet spot <laughs> caveco and the nib is, uh, let's say, you can um, notice, I hope you can notice, that um, the iridium point is long gone. I don't know if, if, if this original had an iridium point. It looks like a stub nib, you can see. But we will um, try to continue. So this is a colleague. 
I hope I've uh, written it correctly. Yes, colleague. Caveco Fabricat. Caveco. You can see we have uh, skips, but this is mm, due to the Fabricat. Okay. The nib, we have a steel nib. Steel nib. Apparently without an iridium iridium point, so no iridium point. Let me see if, if we have some line variation. And incredibly, yes, you can see it. So yes, it is a semi-flexible, semi-flexible steel nib let me do also the pressure test so here without pressure and here the pressure yes we have some little line variation and you can see it rise quite well if you find it's a, a wet spot or it's hot spot <laughs> okay uh, let me see how it is for some um, signatures so Review. Yes, it escapes. It is an old, old nib. And why not? Let's uh, write with that uh, naughty, naughty fox. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog you can see it certainly writes like an um, oblique nib i really don't know the story of this nib maybe you can help me so it's an onyx nib onyx number two three nine if you know something about these imprints maybe you can help me so guys this was my um review of this beautiful beautiful fountain pen and i really think it's a part of caveco history during uh, world war time if you've enjoyed this uh, review of this uh, vintage piece please uh, subscribe to my channel to support my activity wherever you are i wish you a nice day maybe it will write let me see so have a nice day no <laughs> I will dip it again. So wherever you are, guys, I wish you to have a nice day. Thank you for your time. I will see you again at the next episode. Till then. Bye-bye.